Welcome back to Finals at the Academy. So, uh, gonna close the vent down. It's an old dead skeleton in the kitchen. That's suspicious. Where was the meat that you were cooking? Where did it come from? I don't know. Nice table. Alright, so I've explored everywhere in this. No, I haven't explored everyone. I haven't explored the story. Well, we have another cabbage. Cold storage. Fresh milk. Okay. If I need milk, I guess I can come here for it. Ice. Sardines. More cabbages. And uh, ice tongs, lots of milk, all right. And up would be to the smokehouse. Oh, right, smokehouse. We needed something from the smokehouse, right? Heck, my can't. There we are. Smoke fish. It's not all of these are ready. <coughs> uh, let's get out of here before. Uh... Was I hearing those footsteps from maybe up above? So, yes, smoked fish. Shed no tears. Yeah, we're quick and wet, but still I'm dry. Correct, smoked fish is exactly that. Now, this must be strawberries. I've got a couple of smoked fish, I've got a couple of strawberries. Frost in the dark, you twist my tongue from behind then quick I'm sprung soft my groaning white pleasure midnight ward of lady treasure lady treasure withdraw your soft dangling tether withdrawn your soft dangling tether holds your part tied up with leather what the hell is that is that anything I've got it's not a skull nor an egg or a cabbage I've got some round things Maybe wrong for the other one. Hmm. So let's check the other riddle. Not born, but from a mother drawn. I hang until one half is gone. In caves I sleep until I'm old, by then I'm ready, firm, and gold. I mean, eggs aren't born, right? But that doesn't really describe an egg. Without wings yet, I did fly. The skill I used went out my peak. I mean, a feathery tail and broken beak, that could be a quill, because you, you cut the tip of a quill so, yeah, okay. Quill, maybe this is, this is the... This is the toilet paper. Sky swiftly without wings. Definitely not an egg. A dangle, dead. Eight legs be fed. Yeah, I don't know what those others are. Okay, so far so good. Oh, more food, alright. Um, so yeah, I guess we now need to go up the main staircase. There's the brass padlock, right? In the, yeah. I took the quill. Milk. Eraser. Padlock. Do any of those fit these? Not born, but from a mother drawn. That could be milk. 
Definitely drawn from my mother. I hang until one half is gone. In caves, I sleep until I'm old, but then I'm ready for my goals. Oh, jeez. It could be cheese. It's not. It doesn't seem to be milk. Let's make a question mark there. Um, that's definitely not milk. And... Doesn't seem to be milk either. Okay, people do come and go from this room. This area. Oh, good, we've got more stairs. Pantry, straight ahead, dining room. Nobody should be coming into the pantry, right? Oh, I see the dumbwaiter comes here. Cork stopper. Hmm. Don't know if I need it. Do I need it? Wait, do I need a stopper for uh, the potion one? One bottle with a stopper you must add within the copper, but I've got a bottle with a stopper, right? Where's my empty bottle? Empty push bottle with stopper, yes. Okay. So the dumb waiter looks onto the dining room, that makes perfect sense. What have we got on the map? Dining room, janitor closet. Library. Hmm. I'll add all the candles and make this place a little more friendly to a uh, person of our particular need to stay hidden. A dinner knife. Bottles of wine. More wine. Dinner fork. Another one. I don't know if I need them. Hello. You look important. In hindsight, that it was a mistake. You only have to read the report to see it is so. And oh, we have a another one of those keeper guards on watch right outside the room. Hmm, I have a gas lamp that I could. Perhaps extinguish, but there's lots of gas lamps there. No, they, they, they sensed me. Oh, it's also a noisy floor, I didn't realise. No, they, they, I just got too close to them. So they're going to be a nuisance. Certain. What if we go the other way? So right here we have, let's put an X. We could go the other way. Maybe I'll stop in for a little light reading. 
liked reading, huh? Well, there's no one else in here right now. The home garden. Inside the gate there is a footpath, and the footpath must be winding. At the turn of the footpath there is an outdoor screen, and the screen must be small. Behind the screen there is a terrace, and the terrace must be level. On the banks of the terrace there are flowers, and the flowers must be bright coloured. Beyond the terrace there is a wall, and the wall must be low. By the side of the wall is a pine tree, and the pine tree must be old. At the foot of the pine tree there are rocks, and the rocks must be quaint. Over the rocks there is a pavilion, and the pavilion must be simple. Beyond the pavilion are bamboos, and they must be sparse. Beyond the bamboos there is a house, and the house must be secluded. By the side of the road, house is a road, and the road must branch off. Where several branches come together is a bridge, and the bridge must be tantalising to cross. At the end of the bridge there are trees, and the trees must be tall. In the shade of the trees there is grass, and the grass must be green. Above the grass plot is a ditch, and the ditch must be slender. At the top of the ditch is a spring, and the spring must gurgle. Above the spring there is a hill, and the hill must be undulating. Below the hill is a hall, and the hall must be square. At the corner of the hall there is a vegetable garden, and the garden must be big. In the garden is a stork, and the stork must dance. The stork announces a guest, and the guest must not be vulgar. When the guest arrives, he is offered wine, and the wine must not be declined. At the drink, the guest must get drunk, and the drunken guest must not want to go home. Hmm. 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 Hmm, indeed. The advice of a master to a newly initiated keeper. One, two. The master speaks. One time member of the school, come here to me, and let me explain to you what my teacher revealed. 3-8. Oh, 3-8. Like you, I was once a youth and had a mentor. The teacher assigned a task to me. It was man's work. Like a spring reed, I leapt up and put myself to work. I did not depart from my teacher's instructions, and I did not start doing things on my own initiative. My mentor was delighted with my work on the assignment. He rejoiced that I was humble before him, and he spoke in my favour. 9-15. I just did whatever he outlined for me. Everything was always in its place. Only a fool would have deviated from his instructions. He guided my hand on the parchment and kept me on the right path. He made me eloquent with words and gave me advice. He focused my eyes on the rules which guide a man with the task. Zeal is proper for a task. Time wasting is taboo. Anyone who wastes time on his task is neglecting his task. 16 to 20. He did not vaunt his knowledge. His words were modest. If he had vaunted his knowledge, people would have frowned. Do not waste time. Do not rest at night. Get on with that work. Do not reject the pleasurable company of a mentor or his assistant. Once you have come into contact with such great brains, you will make your own words more worthy. 21 to 26. And another thing, you will never return to your blinkered vision. That would be greatly to demean due deference, the decency of mankind. Worthy plants calm the heart, and sins are absolved. An empty-handed man's gifts are respected as such. Even a poor man clutters a kid to his chest as he kneels. 27 to 28. There, I have recited to you what my teacher revealed, and you will not neglect it. You should pay attention. Taking it to heart will be to your benefit. 29 to 35. The learned initiate answered the master. I shall give you a response to what you have just recited like a magic spell, and a rebuttal to your charming refrain delivered in a bellow. Do not make me out to be an ignoramus. I will answer for you once and for all. You opened my eyes like a puppy's, and you made me into a keeper. But why do you go on outlining rules for me as if I were a shirker? Anyone hearing your words directed to them would feel insulted. 36 to 40. The master warned the initiate. Beware. Your words are like stones thrown on one side of the balance. When your measure is next taken, you may be found wanting. Do not spurn the teachings. Do not rebuff the order. An exile walks a lonely and dangerous path. Act not the betrayer, my brother. Hmm. Hello. What? Interesting. I can partially lockpick it. Question. What is Olm's speaking stone and why is it silent? Olm the necromancer once boasted that he was so powerful that he could even make a stone speak. When his then current mistress expressed some doubts to this claim, Olm killed her and imprisoned her soul in a cloudy blue gem. Sure enough, the gem began to speak in a voice loud enough to be heard clearly in nearby villages and townships. For nine nights and nine days, it recited Olm's faults and failings continuously and without once repeating itself. Early on the morning of the tenth day, Olm finally succeeded in cursing the stone to silence. But the stone is still said to point out Olm's mistakes by changing its colour whenever it is in the presence of his magic. 
Instruction. Words have power. Speak softly and choose carefully. Huh. Question. What are the Delphonic Esoterica? Response. Some keep orders use specific esoterica as aids, wands, scrying balls, chakra crystals, and so on. Asher's teaching emphasize glyph magic and personal strength over external aids. To that end, all Delphanic keepers train extensively in physical and mental disciplines. However, two specific pieces of jewelry are part of Delphanic rituals. On the completion of an acolyte's initiation, the newly initiated keeper is given a medallion and spelled with the glyphs of health and balance. Well, those glyphs didn't really help the poor guy with the war axe in his head, did he? And on elevation, each new elder is given a ring of unlocking the key to that elder's new duties. This ring may also aid in the unlocking of unprotected locks. Instruction, find balance in the internal and the external. New objectives. Optional, uh, find a keeper medallion to help your healing. Interesting. I haven't completed it. Right. Um. Yeah, okay, that's that one. Ring of unlocking. Maybe that's what we need here for that lock. Where does that door take us? To the front office. Okay, let's check out the other books. An act is not, as young men think, like a rock that one picks up and throws and it hits or misses and that's the end of it. When that rock is lifted, the earth is lighter. The hand that bears it is heavier. When it is thrown, the circuits of the stars respond and where it strikes or falls, the universe is changed. On every act, the balance of the whole depends. The winds, the seas, the powers of the water and earth and light, all that these do, all that the beasts and the green things do, is well done and rightly done. All these act within the equilibrium. From the hurricane and the great whale sounding to the fall of a dry leaf and the gnat's flight, all they do is within the balance of the whole. But we, insofar as we have power over the world and over one another, we must learn to do what the leaf and the whale and the wind do of their own nature. We must learn to keep the balance. Having intelligence, we must not act in ignorance. Garrett, you're never going to be a good keeper. Well, if you scoff at that teaching. In the fifth moon, we gather wild plums and cherries. In the sixth moon, we boil mallow and beans. In the seventh moon, we dry the dates. In the eighth moon, we take the rice to make with it the spring wine so our lord may be granted long life. In the seventh moon, we cut the gourds. In the eighth moon, we take the seeding hemp. We gather bitter herbs. We Cut a lanto for firewood that our lord may eat. In the eighth moon we make ready the stackyards. In the ninth moon we bring in the harvest. Millet for wine, millet for cooking, the early and the late, paddy and hemp, beans and wheat. My lord, the harvesting is over. We begin work on your houses. In the morning we gather thatch reeds. In the evening we twist ropes. We work quickly on the roofs, for soon we will sow the lord's many grains. In the days of the first we cut the ice for tingling blows. In the days of the second we bring it to the cold shed. In the days of the third, very early, we offer pigs and garlic that our lord may eat. In the tenth moon, as shrewd frosts, we clear the stackyards. With twin pitchers we hold the village beast, killing for it a spring lamb. Up we go to our lord's hall, raise the drinking cups of buffalo horn. Hurrah for our lord, may he live for ever and ever. Huh. And this way goes to... Ah. Wait. That's the same... Uh, they might be coming this direction, I better... Oh no, they're the one, they go... Oh, they... I was about to say, they go into the dining room, no, they come here. Maybe they go from here to the dining room, let's see. That would make sense. Oh, that's the stairway. What does this say? Live... Right, we need a key to it. Or something. Librarian. So, is there anything of relevance on this upper level of the library? Perhaps, perhaps not. At least, perhaps not now. 
All right, let's see what the front office looks like. Dock. That's good. Circulation desk. Bursa. Hm. Hello. 4432. Two Bursa. CC file. Subject special storage passcode. I went up to the special storage safe and reset the five digit passcode for you. The attached mnemonic is much simpler than the last one. The Pelagic Arcasy Sites Land was a big mistake. Even I had trouble with that. With the new one, as long as you remember how to tell the time and how to count, you should have no troubles. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. Pelagic Argosy Sites Land. So the old number was uh, 376. Six four, I guess, counting the letters. But uh, the new one. Remember how to tell the time and how to count. What did I write about that? Where did I write about that? Yeah, nothing was attached. I wonder where the mnemonic is. Question. Look at me, brethren and betrayer. The unknown acolyte. The master thief. There's a locked box inside the safe. They want to be doubly sure, and yet they use a lock that can be picked by even a keeper novice, a keeper acolyte, a master thief such as myself. Although I guess I'm still yet to prove myself fully master thief. Librarian unlocking ring. Okay, I can't pick that up anymore. Hello? And Vesagensa Felera, Descartes and Porta Animus Potentium. My hand falls useless to my side, doubly cursed in living death. Huh. Secrets of the immortal Nicholas Flamel. Or was names. Asher borrowed it. Eyes of the Necromancers. Blood King, a new interpretation of the Necromancer. Oh. Forbidden Rites, Necromancer's Manual. The Bone Palace Rites of the Flesh and the Bone. Orm's early Anharan Empire. Hmm. The Book of Ash. Borrowed by Azaran the Cruel, who never returned it. Ah, and also borrowed by uh, the other Asher. This is the Hierophant Asher, I guess. Past you know the scent to Azran. Mine tracks, the location and construction. Personal loan to M. Leopold per request. Jim Coleman. Olms Grimoria Necromantica. Quiet, 12103, non circulating. Per uh, him, Asher, special collections, attic safe. Nothing of interest in that file. Can't open the drawer, so I'll anything thrown out here? No. Library circulation systems, an overview. This paper will attempt to present a model circulation system indicating a spectrum of functions and benefits. All types of circulation systems will be discussed in an attempt to measure the capabilities of these systems against the model and each other. Circulation systems can be categorized into four major groups based on the mode of operation, manual, semi-assisted, data collection, and assisted. Fry was able to describe and compare 28 systems, most of which were variations of two basic types. The new self charge system, originating around a server and based on a book card paradigm, and the transaction card system. Essentially, these systems are unidimensional or single file systems. Modifications to these systems include the Gaylord system, the Demco system, and the Blauer system. Huh. Yeah. Not really my favorite, favorite reading material. So, uh, 
My hand pulls you to my side, doubly cursed and loving death. Doesn't seem relevant to what I'm doing, whoops. You know what? We got the librarian's ring, we should get back to the library. Your footsteps. Coming or going? Master Librarian. Names of the Dead. The custom of abstaining from all mention of the names of the dead was observed in antiquity by the precursors, and at the present day it is in full force among the many pagan tribes. Thus we are told that one of the customs most rigidly observed and enforced is never to mention the name of a deceased person, whether male or female. To name aloud one who has departed this life would be a gross violation of their most sacred prejudices, and they carefully abstain from it. The chief motive for this abstinence appears to be a fear of evoking the ghost, although the natural unwillingness to revive past sorrows undoubtedly operates also to draw the veil of oblivion over the names of the dead. Among the pagans of East Quarter, the dead are very rarely spoken of, and then never by their names. They are referred to in a subdued voice as the lost one, or the poor fellow that is no more. To speak of them by name would, it is supposed, excite the malignity of Kuigil, the spirit of the departed, which hovers on earth for a time before it departs forever towards the setting sun. Of the pagans on the lower river, we are told that when a person dies, they carefully avoid mentioning his name, but if compelled to do so, they pronounce it in a very low whisper, so faint that they imagine the spirit cannot hear their voice. Amongst the pagans near Old Ale, no one may utter the name of the deceased during a period of mourning, unless it is absolutely necessary to do so, and then it is only done in a whisper for fear of disturbing and annoying the man's spirit which is walking about in ghostly form. If the ghost hears his name mentioned, he concludes that his kinfolk are not mourning for him properly. If their grief were genuine, they could not bear to bandy his name about. Touched to the quick by their hard-hearted indifference, the indignant ghost will come and trouble them in dreams. The same reluctance to utter the names of the dead appears to prevail among all the pagan tribes along both banks of the river. Among the Gojuros, to mention the dead before his kinsmen is a dreadful offence, which is often punished with death. For if it happens in the home of the deceased, in presence of his nephew or uncle, they will assuredly kill the offender on the spot if they can. But if he escapes, the penalty resolves itself into a heavy fine, usually of two or more barricades. A similar reluctance to mention the names of the dead is reported of people so widely separated from each other as the Samoyeds and the Todas, the Kershocks of Tartary and Tuaregs of West Bimbi, the Ainos, the Akamba and the Nandi, the Tinguinans and the inhabitants of the Nicobar Islands. In all cases, even where it is not expressly stated, the fundamental reason for this avoidance is probably the fear of the ghost. That this is the real motive of the Tuaregs, we are positively informed. They dread the return of the dead man's spirit, and do all they can to avoid it by shifting their camp after a death, ceasing forever to pronounce the name of the departed, and eschewing everything that might be regarded as an evocation or recall of his soul. They believe that anyone who adopted the name of a deceased person would not live long. Probably his ghostly namesake was supposed to come and fetch him away to the spirit land. The same fear of the ghost, which moves people to suppress his old name, naturally leads all persons who bear a similar name to exchange it for another, lest its utterance should attract the attention of the ghost, who cannot reasonably be expected to discriminate between all the different applications of the same name. Thus we are told that in the Adelaide, the repugnance up to mentioning the names of those who have died lately is carried so far that persons who bear the same name as the deceased abandon it, and either adopt temporary names, or are known by any others that happen to belong to them. A similar custom prevails among some of the Shalebridge pagans, but the prohibition to use the names of the dead is not permanent, though it may last for many years. In some pagan tribes, the change of name thus brought about is permanent. The old name is laid aside forever, and the man is known by his new name for the rest of his life, or at least until he is obliged to change it again for a like reason. Among the northern pagans, all persons, whether men or women, who bore the name of one who had just died, were obliged to abandon it and to adopt other names, which was formally done at the first ceremony of mourning for the dead. In some tribes to the east, this change of name lasted only during the season of mourning, but in other tribes it seems to have been permanent. Further, when the name of the deceased happens to be that of some common object, such as an animal or plant or fire or water, it is sometimes considered necessary to drop that word in ordinary speech and replace it by another. A custom of this sort, it is plain, may easily be a potent agent of change in language, 
for where it prevails to any considerable extent, many words must constantly become obsolete and new ones spring up. And this tendency has been remarked by observers who have recorded the custom. For example, with regard to the pagans, it has been noted that the dialects change with almost every tribe. Some tribes name their children after natural objects, and when the person so named dies, the word is never again mentioned. Another word has therefore to be invented for the object after which the child was called. The writer gives an instance, the case of a man whose name Kala signified fire. And when Kala died, a new word for fire had to be introduced. Hence, adds the writer, the language is always changing. If a, name, if a man of the name of Nke, which means water, were to die, the whole tribe will be obliged to use some other word to express water for a considerable time after his decease. The writer who records this custom surmises that it may, may explain the presence of a number of synonyms in the language of the tribe. This conjecture is confirmed by what we know of some pagans whose speech comprised a regular set of synonyms to be used instead of the common terms by all members of a tribe in times of mourning. For instance, if a man called Wa, Crow, departed this life during the period of mourning for him, nobody might call a Crow a Wa. Everybody had to speak of the bird as a Nerafat. When a person who rejoiced in the title of Ringtail Possum, Weon, who had gone the way of all flesh, his sorrowing, sorrowing relations and the tribe at large were bound for a time to refer to Ringtail Possums by the more sonorous name of Manunkurt. If the community were plunged in grief for the loss of a respected female who bore the honourable name of Turkey Bustard, the proper name for Turkey Busters, which was Baron Baron, went out, until it came in. And so Mutatis Mutandis were the names of Black Cockatoo, Grey Duck, Gigantic Crane, Burrick, Eagle, Spider, and the rest. Among the Yaps, when a woman was with child and near the time of her delivery, a deceased ancestor or relation used to appear to her in a dream and inform her what dead person was to be born again in her infant, and whose name the child was therefore to bear. If the woman had no such dream, it fell to the father or the relatives to determine the name by divination or by consulting a wizard. Among the Khons, a birth is celebrated on the seventh day after the event by a feast given to the priest and to the whole village. To determine the child's name, the priest drops grains of rice into a cup of water, naming with each grain a deceased ancestor. From the movements of the seed in the water, and from observations made on the person of the infant, he pronounces which of his progenitors has reappeared in him, and the child, generally, at least among the northern tribes, receives the name of that ancestor. Among the Yorubas, soon after a child has been born, a priest of Ifa, the god of divination, appears on the scene to ascertain what ancestral soul has been reborn in the infant. As soon as this has been decided, the parents are told that the child must conform in all respects to the manner of life of the ancestor who now animates him or her, and if, as often happens, they profess ignorance, the priest supplies the necessary information. The child usually receives the name of the ancestor who has been born again in him. Hmm. Any secrets for me, Master Librarian? Which more thing was this book? Question. What is the babblefish, and what did it say? Response. One day Master Asher went out net fishing and caught a strange fish in his net. As he hauled the fish out of the water, began to speak, Asher quickly dropped the netted fish into his boat and searched for something to write with, for Asher had recognised the fish as the fabulous babblefish, whose words are always wise. All he had in the boat to write with was a stick of charcoal, so that was what he used to scribble the fish's words on the sides of his boat. While he was writing, the fish worked its way loose from the water net, jumped back in the water, and swam away. Asher then rode back to port, ran up to his house, gathered up pen, ink, and paper to transcribe the fish's words. Unfortunately, by that time it had begun to drizzle, and the charcoal letters of the words had all run together. Asher did his best to copy down what he could before they all washed away. This is what has come down to us of the fish's wisdom. Build a club van which is one near the veranda ring and progress a senior land bangle vocal distinct for the circle of slip etc 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 etc. Instruction The path of the wise is found in the babble of a netted fish. Wait, 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 wait. Ring the bell of wisdom when Pegasus changes colour in the land of the winged sphinx. Ring the bell of wisdom when Pegasus changes colour in the land of the winged sphinx. Did you write that down, Garrett, or do I have to write that for you?
Ring the bell of wisdom when the Pegasus changes color the land of the winged sphinx. I think that's right. Ring the bell of wisdom when Pegasus, well, when the Pegasus, whatever, changes color in the land of the winged sphinx. Yes. Okay. Oh, hello. Got a exhibit key cunningly hidden up there. Nice. That was I nearly very nearly missed that. Would have been very easy to miss. All right. Making progress. You know what I'm going to do is make another hard circle. Don't do enough of those. And with the sudden mission overs in this mission really does behoove me to uh, not rely solely on quick save. Well, hmm. This looks interesting. Fairly darker. Maybe I can turn this light off too. There we are. Coffee. Does it look interesting? That ought to do it. I don't know what it's all about. I can barely distinguish the pieces from the squares. I mean, I would turn the light back on, but I don't know who comes and goes in this room. I don't to do what? I don't want to mess with it when I don't know what I'm messing. Why I'm messing with it? Reception. Let's, let's make a note though. This goes to the ground gallery, which would not be very safe for me to turn to it. I think. Oh, there's that fellow again. No light switch there. We do have more bathrooms, and I don't think I need more tissue. Is there anything else in here though? Maybe always check behind the doors. Nothing. Odd. There it is again. It is inappropriate to put It is only that my eyes are tired from the day's work. And the uh, guarding fellow at the end of the hall nearly saw me as well. It's a nice bloody noisy floor. We've got five moss arrows, but you know, moss arrows are not good for large expanses of floor. They're good for <sighs> small things. Let's put out these candles. Quickly, before anybody comes. There's a clock that doesn't keep good time. In the city where there are no dogs, the fox is boss. You don't want to pick up a stool, I don't think. In darkness languishes the precious stone. When will its excellence enchant the world? When seeming is taken for being, being becomes seeming. When nothing is taken for something, something becomes nothing. The stone dispels seeming and nothing and climbs to the gates of the great void. Mm. More quills if I want them. I, mean, I suppose I could use the uh, stools like crates to climb on. Anything on these desks? I mean, more quills. How many quills do I need? I've got the world's largest quill collection. 
Okay, scriptorium. Let's check the supply room. Let's see what we're doing here. Copies, papers. Well, that's what it's still useful for. Seeing on top of the top shelf where there is nothing to see. Okay. Well, hopefully no one will hear this. Put it back where it came from. Okay, so we can go to the Grand Gallery or check out the Head Scribe. I guess we'll check out the Head Scribe's place first. Doesn't look any lighter here, but the light does illuminate me. A scribe who does not know how to grasp the meaning, where will he produce a translation? Very good question. Get some bananas. You know what I realize? I realize I forgot something very important way back in the student rooms. I need to go there right now and sort it out. Vital. think no it wasn't that room or was it this one no it's the, the, the music player that's the bathroom nope uh-huh there's a model toy here with a switch on the bottom. <laughs> he set it up as a flying barrack that breathes, breathes barrack gas. Wow, that's a nasty fart trap. That's a fun prank to play on your fellow students. Hopefully it's not sufficient Barrett gas to be uh, dangerous. Well, this is the laboratory. This is where we're going to need ingredients, right? Probably eggs. I've done about a skull and war axe. But definitely they're quills. Now we'll keep the garage quill, we'll keep my own quill. Other than that, I think that's an empty potion bottle of stuff, I'm not sure. All right, back upstairs, which was, yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so what I've realized is well we have this fellow who's coming through right now. Well, he may be going away. I'm not sure whether his footsteps are coming or going. I guess. Now it's coming. I can put out some gas lamps. Which should save me from some risk of detection. Yeah, he's definitely coming this way. Can I get into the janitor closet? I can. Can I get more water arrows? I can. Can I get out of the janitor closet without being detected? Indeed, I can. Okay. Now these other gas lamps, I don't think I can reach. No. That one's too far away. But that was an improvement. All right. On one, on one dimension. Or one direction. Okay, we need to go... I guess we might be able to cross this way. In the administration office. So there is that other... guard there that we saw. We nearly saw us. It's hanging around out here near the administration office. So I should be cautious. Oh, they're just standing that way, looking that way. Okay, now they do move. How am I hearing these footsteps? Okay, I feel a lot safer now in this hallway. Hmm, oh, there's that stairway. What's this? Maps. Maps. Do not remove maps from the map room. Pagan map. Okay. That looks like a map of a maze. 
copies Necropolis map. Island world map. Nice. So, where is my copy of the Necropolis map? No? Aha! Maze of Anhara. Those are caches, right? And there's errors. I don't know what this means, but I guess we'll find out at some point. Let's admire this. Wow, that's... that's Garrett made a very good copy. I don't know how he copied the broken bits, but... Uh, I do like this map. It's a very nicely done map. Beautiful, beautifully worn and torn. And covered in glyphs. Excellent. Let's get out of here before they... Keeper fella comes back. Oh, he's in here. Keeper Dominic, student counselor and disciplinarian and apple keeper. I need to be careful because people will come in here and turn the lights on. Jamie, personal assistant to the headmaster. That's just a Coleman, headmaster. To all faculty, file. Subject, Garrett's initiation. Garrett's pre-initiation examination is scheduled for Thursday next, with his novitiate initiation tentatively set for the Mark Day observance. M. Leopold has agreed to stand as Garrett's sponsor. If there are any formal objections to his evaluation, now is the time to let me know. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. Two Keeper is old, CC Vile, subject Garrett's initiation. I believe that Garrett is ready to undertake Asher's initiation ritual. If you agree, let's set up for the Mark Day Observance. Let me know, Coleman. To M. Coleman, no objections. Garrett is undoubtedly one of the finest athletes to have passed through our portals in a long time. His scholarship is adequate. I have no objections to his initiation. From M. Pavel. I have watched over watched Garrett mature over the past several years, and while he's never likely to become a scholar, I have no objection to his elevation towards a career as a field agent. Magister Yolana. Oh, we knocked her out. I guess we're proving the point. Uh, the Ogres will tell turbulent times, but the causes are unclear. I see death spread in our halls. Garrett sits in the web. Is he tangled or tangler? Pass him on quickly to his destiny. The sooner the better for our sakes. I fear him and for him. M. Osteria. If you say he is ready, then he is ready. I'll make the trip out to serve as council witness, and we can have a late supper to celebrate following the formal investiture. Put a golden bottle aside for a private post prandial libation. By my personal hand and for the council of keepers. Keeper is old. P.S. Sweetie C. Surely you tire of your bucolic existence out in Anhara? Come visit, I'll put you up and we'll close the town down together. I formally affirm that I, Leopold, will stand beside Garrett in defence of his elevation to the novitiate ranks of the Delphanic Order of Keepers. I know Garrett to be of sound moral character. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I just uh, struck by an onic bit of, bit of coughing there. Uh, and solidly grounding in the founded, founding principles of the Society of Keepers. I believe that he will make a superior agent, and that as he matures into his manhood, I expect that he will have a significant impact on our historic mission, Magister Leopold. Ah. To all students, subject pilferage. There has been a marked increase in petty pilferage at the Academy. I would like to remind you of our code of behaviour here at the Academy and possible consequences to any student caught stealing or in possession of goods not their own. Pilfered property discovered will constitute sufficient grounds for a dis dis disciplinary hearing before the Academy Council of Elders. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. If a student is a theft suspect, is to him all instructors and staff. If a student is a theft suspect, it is important that 1. The student be confronted in the presence of a witness. 2. The student admits to the possession of property not their own, and that the student admit to intent to steal the items discovered. Appropriate modes of persuasion may be applied to obtain these admissions. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. 
to Riendo, head janitor. Subject, physical plant repairs. The light switches on the dormitory level are wearing out. You have to throw some of them a couple of times before the light comes on. I know the students are extra hard on everything, but if there is an internal short, it could be a fire hazard. Please put this at the top of your to-be-repaired list. Oh, and the clock in this scriptorium is acting up again too. Please take another look at it. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. To Bursa, CC file subject, special storage passcode. I went up to the special storage safe and reset the five-digit passcode for you. The attached mnemonic is much simpler than the last one. The Pelagic Argosy site's land was a big mistake. Even I had trouble with that. With the new one, as long as you remember how to tell the time and how to count, you should have no troubles. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. To file, subject, special storage passcode mnemonic location. My fierce puss will keep it safe. Ha ha ha. By my personal hand, Magister Coleman, Headmaster. <laughs> Raise memoranda. <laughs> and then puts right to laughs in it. Good, good. Magister Leopold. Subject, Yolana's quinquennial review. Leo, I'm concerned about Yolana. As you know, she's up for her regular fifth year review, and I don't think she's taking it very seriously. Ever since she returned from her research trip last summer, the quality of her teaching has fallen off, and she has made no further progress on her spillable. You know what a dynamo she has always been. It's as though a completely different person came back wearing her skin. You and Yolana have always been close. Maybe she will listen to you where she won't listen to me. Please, let her know that she's in serious danger when she goes before the review board if she doesn't have something solid to show them. By my personal hand, Cole. Wait. Oh, I, ho I hope he's only running out about the, the, the cat. Oh, there's anything else. Yeah, my first post will keep it safe, ha ha ha. No ceiling allowed. I guess that doesn't apply to me. <laughs> Copy of notes birth about resetting path code. Hmm, this one looks interesting. Which one I read, so. To Magister Coleman, subject for cotton spells. A few weeks back, I found a box of old water damaged papers in the attic and have been sorting them through to see if what of any value might be recovered. For the most part, they have been a disappointment personal journals, business ledgers, but on the back of one such foolscap, I have identified faded scribblings of what may be four forgotten spells. They don't appear to be anything important, like, say, an Aegis self protection skill, but still interesting in their own right. They're deceptively simple, only two ingredients each, but not ones I'm familiar with from my spellbooks. Take a look and see if you recognize anything of them. Yolana. Winter's Cloak. 1. Abandoned child, scribe fostered, decapitated and heartless. I drink my pill before I speak. 2. Roads without carts, forests, no trees, cities, no homes, waterless seas. What was that for? Winter's Cloak, yeah. Blood poison guts. 1. From hand to mouth, I'm without price. I carry flesh and peas and rice. Your trencher empties in a trice. 2. On sheaths of straw, I lie in bed. My face first white, then blushes red. Petrified curse. 1. Open barrel, shaped like a hive. Filled with flesh, the flesh is alive. Prick me now, your prick I'll deprive. 2. My teeth are sharp, my back is straight. To cut things up, it is my fate. Locksmithy. 1. Spots on my face fall on the ground. Tumbling about, fate has been found. Cut on the table. 2. Cut on the table, but never eaten. Passed all around. Someone got beaten. 2. M. Coleman. Subject technological advances. On reflection, I have come around to your way of thinking and burnt up my blueprints for the device. The times are not right for such an advance, and they may never be right. It is just too powerful a weapon and could easily upset the balance of the wrong hands. A pity. I was quite proud of it, unlike those infernal sound devices that Pavel requested I build for him. Magister Leopold. Form 6, report for Garrett. Hmm, well we passed the first and second semester trimester exams, but the third trimester we've still not done right. Well I guess the that's what we're doing now. Cliff magics, spell magics, history, geography. 
Archery. <laughs> Still training ones. Archery ones. Oh wait, is this ones good or bad? Oh, ones must be good because we're getting ones and twos and locks and safes. Ones and stealth training, ones and archery, ones, twos, and threes and swordsmanship. Okay, geography, very bad at philosophy and glyph magics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Wasn't expecting that. Okay. And what's this door? Oh, he's got his own private. Uh, bathroom here. More tissue if I need it. Which I don't. Is that the... Yes. Okay. Suppose we'll keep it safe. Sad. Mnemonic notes, just underneath it. Okay. The necromancer Olm fed an archer and Sullivan sailors to the undead. Better not be coming in here, man. But you didn't turn the lights on, which is odd. You did last time. Well, I can't go over and check that desk with this fella sitting here. I could maybe sneak up on him and knock him out, but that would be difficult. I don't really want to be knocking out these people. The students, at least, I could put in their beds. Also, the students were a major problem. Just being a highway. Let's see how... Oh, maybe I can reach that light switch without being spotted. Okay, he saw me, but he didn't see me. I guess that's okay. Yeah, it was a sudden pool of brightness I was not expecting. Well, what have we got here? Introduction. The Academy Code of Behaviour is a statement of expectations regarding student standards of conduct, both academic and non-academic. Students are expected to obey all laws, policies, and regulations. Students shall be subject to discipline for violation of these laws, policies, and regulations. Students shall conduct themselves consistent with the Code of Behaviour at all times. Students shall be disciplined for any violations. Grounds for disciplinary action. Misconduct that constitutes grounds for discipline, disciplinary action includes, but is not limited to, a. Acts of academic dishonesty, including, but not limited to, cheating, tampering, fabrication, plagiarism, or assisting others in acts of academic dishonesty. b. Other forms of dishonesty, such as lying, knowingly furnishing false information, or reporting a false emergency. c. Forgery, alteration, or theft, or misuse of any document, record, key, or identification. d. Obstruction or disruption of teaching or of disciplinary procedures, or other keeper instructor functions and activities. E. Disruptive or abusive behaviour such as harassment, physical abuse, intimidation, hazing or stalking of any member of the ac academy community, or knocking them out and leaving them on the bed. F. Vandalism, graffiti or other willful misconduct which results in cutting, defacing or other damages to any real or personal property owned by the academy or a member of the community. G. Assault, battery, violence or threat of violence or any willful misconduct which results in an injury or death of a student or any academy staff or behaviour that threatens the health and safety of any member of the community. H. Theft of academy property or property in the possession of or owned by a member of the community. I. Failure to comply with the directions of the Keeper Academy officials acting in the performance of their duties and or failure to identify oneself to these persons when requested to do so. J. Possession or use of explosives, dangerous chemicals or deadly weapons on academy property without prior authorization. K. Engaging in lewd, indecent or obscene behaviour on academy property. 
L. Unauthorized use of or misuse of academy property including but not limited to unauthorized possession or use of district keys and or unauthorized entry into academy property. M. Knowingly assisting another person in the commission of a violation of the student code of conduct. N. Willful, willful disruption of the orderly operation of the campus. O. Leading or setting others to disrupt schedule and or normal authorized activities. P. Failure to return library books on time. Q. Any other ground constituting good cause. 3. Types of discipl disciplinary action. The following disciplines may be imposed individually or in various combinations on any student found to have violated the Academy Code of Behaviour. Warning, restitution, project and compensatory retirement, disciplinary probation, loss of privileges, removal, expulsion, revocation, applied modes of anguish, termination. Note, commonly applied modes of anguish include dislocation by the pulley, ropes and weights, roasting the soles of the feet, suffocation by tightened ropes and or water, insertion of the canes, Crushing by the die. The auto da fe. Hmm. Keep it Gwyneth, Dean of Students. Wow, so these people have harsh punishments. Alright, I feel like I'm liable to get caught here by the other guy. Don't. Who is now coming? Just look. Let me run in here. Oh no, that was the other guy going upstairs. No. Nope. There's somebody coming this way. Alright, I'm, I'm fine. Okay. We've got a main staircase there, but what about this staircase? I don't know. I do know that uh, I should end the episode here. So thanks very much for watching, and uh, I'll see you here soon. Yes, he has keep it training. Until next episode, then.